Hey, it's your host Tinto and I have exciting news to share with you before we get into this weekend's episode. The romantic dramedy fiction podcast called Private Affairs inspired by true events is now live. In season 1, Veronica also known as V, a recent Melbourne transplant from Zimbabwe unexpectedly finds herself in a situation with a charming Aussie doctor. She quickly has to learn how to keep her wig on when things get sexy as well as navigate other complexities of an intercultural relationship. This project is sponsored by the Victorian Government of Australia through Creative Victoria and will be available wherever you get your podcasts. For more information, head over to www.privateaffairspod.com. I'm in. You should. Is that a breakup? I think we have a situation right here. On the film station. Hi, hi Tinto. Hey, what's happening? How you doing? I'm good. Long time, long time. Finally, we locked this in, right? Finally, <laughs> right. This was meant to happen in 2020. <laughs> We've entered a whole new yep. year. And I was like, nah, this is not going beyond the 10th of January. <laughs> it has to be done today. <laughs> That's it. It's been such a long year, dude. Like and, already. So and, yeah, good call. Good and, call. And I like how I caught you off guard. I was like, Jeff, two minutes. Then you're like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you 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 were like, Oh, I'm just chilling watching TV. I was like, Right, that's all I needed to know. We're recording your episode in two minutes. <laughs> you sold yourself yeah, good, out. Good, good one, Pinto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So welcome to the Feeling Station. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Mm, how are you feeling? Um. Considering it caught me off guard, mm-hmm. I'm a bit, you know, like, uh, but I so good. Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> You're a good storyteller anyway, so I'm not even worried or panicking. <laughs> So, um, (laughs) for those listening to this podcast for the first time, it touches on breakup stories that people would like to talk about with a view to give you lessons that we're going to pick up from today's experience. Now, the reason, well, one of the reasons why the podcast is doing great is that we do our best to keep people anonymous, which leads me to the exciting part of the podcast. And that's giving you your name. Okay. Are you ready for this one? I was born ready. (laughs) Okay. So, I've, I've gone over to North Africa. Um, and your name comes from uh, Egypt. Oh, okay. okay. And it's funny. You see, you see, your reaction to this will depend on how I pronounce the name. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to pronounce it in two ways. Mm-hmm. The first way I'm going to pronounce it is Isis. Isis. Yeah, Isis. Right? Okay. And that's your first reaction. Yeah. Great. I can pronounce it differently. Mm-hmm. Isis. Isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. not ISIS. Like see, there, I there we go. And and the reactions could yeah. be different. So I don't know which one you'd rather mm-hmm. that I call you, ISIS or ISIS. Um, I think ISIS. You think ISIS? Fine. So we're gonna go for ISIS. Yeah. yeah. And ISIS means the supreme goddess. Oh, uh, that's it. Mm. And 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 you give me supreme goddess vibes every time we talk over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right is, you're not is, wrong is that so, a good descri- yeah i take it <laughs> yeah, is that a good description of you as a person i think so yeah mm-hmm. actually i know but yeah okay Great one. good stuff mm-hmm. and what are you going to call the guy who you're going to talk about in this episode okay so i'm going to talk about so it's all going to be on a timeline and there's okay. three different people but the main character Mm-mm. So there's a main character who's mm-hmm. like the main one. Um, and you understand why he's a main character. Okay. Um, so I have to give him a name, right? I have to give them all names, right? Well, I think the, um, yeah, the main one is the one who really should have a name. But I guess if the others yeah. need to have names, feel free to go ahead and give them names. So the first one will be X. Um, and then the main one will be Kiali Buha, simply because I love that name. <laughs> it's Swana, but thank you. Okay. I hope I pronounced it properly. And uh, the third one is why. Uh, well, well, the second one should actually be Kiale Boja. That's it. You said it better. Yeah. You know, you but, know, that, um, you know that's what the Twanas would say. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay. I'll just call him. Yeah. <laughs> Kiale Boja. But I said it was okay. But anyways, um, I hope uh-huh. I pronounced it okay. And then the third one mm-hmm. is just the Y, the letter Y. So X, oh, okay. Buha, um, and Y. Okay. okay, that's um that yeah that, that's that's an interesting set of names and relatively easy to remember. So the main character is X, and then no. in the mix of we've got the the oh. main Kalibuha. 
Ooh, okay. I better make so a the middle one is that. the main one. It's the like the main okay. story here, and nice. then the others are just products of. It, you're just going to have an understanding. So wow. Since since when did men become products of a relationship? Wow. <laughs> oh, I don't mean it that way, but you know, like you understand, like it, these are all just uh. based off the experiences. It was sort of like a build up to Kia Libuha mm-hmm. and then. Because they've all sort of been at the same um, time at some point. All three, not all three of them, but Kelibu has sort of mm-hmm. been, you know, like a common common character common in to, all okay. those relationships. <laughs> wow, this is going to be interesting. So the names that I have, we've got Isis for you, the Supreme Goddess, and then yes. we got X, and then we've got uh, Kialeboha, who is the yes. main character, and then we got Y. Yes. Now, now on to the second interesting part of this podcast. What lesson or lessons would you like people to learn from the story you're going to share today? Okay, so this, the first one is you don't, you shouldn't let your past hurts or your dramas or your traumas sort of, you know, dictate how you go about with your life. Yes, you go through stuff. That's understandable. Um, but it's truly important to, you know, at some point to say that I have to work on myself and I can't keep blaming mm-hmm. somebody who was there in the past. And then mm-hmm. um, don't start long distance relationships like lo- in a long distance relationship and not really have a plan. And um, mm-hmm. the third one is if you're going to try to be a better person, you have to do it in your own time and because you want to do it, not because your partner expects you to do it because you end up doing stuff just to try to please them. But inside you're feeling like, you know, you're not quite where you want to be or you're rushing it or you're not quite, you know, it's not quite yeah. right at that moment. And yeah, um, yeah. another thing is, um, it's really important to maintain boundaries in any relationship. So romantic, family, friendships, whatever it is, it's really important. And just to understand your partner. And then another one, which I feel is mm-hmm. very, very important. And I actually learned um, throughout my, like the this last part of my life is you need to know your dominant love languages and you need to know your partner's dominant love languages and you need to know if you're going to be able to cater to those and if they're able to cater to you. So ultimately, it's really important to know if you're, wow. if you're sort of like mesh. Because that um, is, I can tell you it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that that's a really good lesson. And, and I just want yeah. to play these back. So it's actually five to make sure I've got them right. So the first mm-hmm. one is don't let past hurts, drama, trauma dictate how you get on with your life. You know, you have to work on yourself. Lesson number two, don't do long distance relationships without a plan. Lesson number three, if you want to be a better person, do it in your own time. Lesson number four, maintain boundaries in any relationship, whether it's romantic, Mm -hmm. family, friendships, etc. And the last, which I think is really, really, really important, is Mm -hmm. you need to know your dominant love language and the dominant love language of your partner. And you need to know whether that caters to your needs and whether that caters to their needs. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, you just have yeah. to Dope. know if you're able to cater to each other. Yeah. Right. Let's get Ooh. straight into the story. Yeah, I mean, take it to take it away. Okay. So, um, X and Kialibuha went to the same high school. This is in Zimbabwe. Mm. They mm-hmm. went to the same high school. They were my friends. And then towards the end of high school, X and I started dating. We went to study in mm-hmm. South Africa. We had our little, you know, young love thing. And Kialibuha, Kialibuha and I mm-hmm. were always like, you know, we're always friends. We're always in touch. We kept in touch. Um, he ended up, you know, dating somebody I knew. He went over to Canada and I was in South Africa. We're always friends, Facebooking. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the usual um, would chat here and there. And then we kind of lost contact, but we always would send each other messages to say, Hey, how are you doing? And I always seem to have a, you know, a boyfriend. You always seem to have a girlfriend, which was fine. So I'm yeah. dating X. X was one of those, mm-hmm. um, people. I always maintained that 
I should have never dated. I should, he should have never been my boyfriend, but dude, I was young and I thought I was, well, I was, well, so, well, uh, here's your first romantic. question. Pardon? Here's, 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 here's your first question. Why shouldn't he have ever been your boyfriend? Because what was wrong with him? It wasn't that what was wrong with him. It just became so toxic. It got so toxic towards the end. And he was one of those people who would say some really, really hurtful things to me. And I would end up doing some really, really weird shit as well. And um, I'll give an example where I Mm. actually, one time I got into his socials, his social media. But that was, you know, I just wanted to see he was acting a bit weird. And he would tell me things like, I don't want you to wear that dress because I don't yeah. want you to wear that dress. And what would I do? I would rush off and I would go and wear something else. Why? Because he's, so he sort of broke me and uh, being that, yeah. Okay. So, so before you go too far, right. You just yeah. said to me, started doing some weird shit, right. Yeah. Like asking you to change what you wear. Yeah. And that was enough reason for you to get into his socials. No, so he changed Like, obviously over the course of the relationship I was so whipped, man yeah. I thought I was going to get married to this guy I was so in love <laughs> yeah. And mm-hmm. obviously a person changes And then, you know, we grew older We graduated And then, you know I guess it got boring And it became a little bit toxic And a bit monotonous And it was, yeah. you know I think we just outgrown the relationship but we'd always been very good friends even prior to us you know being in a relationship we're always like really really good friends we got along we would talk we'd have the most fun yeah. but then we decided one time oh you know we kiss and then oh i like you you like me oh cute let's do this you know and then so what led to me getting into his socials is that he wasn't mm-hmm. like really there um like really present and I was wondering what the hell is going on. So I wanted to see what was in his socials. And I didn't see anything. <laughs> so here's a question for you. Yeah. Was he was was he generally never present from day one? Or he was very present and then suddenly he started becoming less present? Um, it was the latter. So he was very, very oh, okay. present. And then, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, you know, when something's just fizzling, it's just fizzled out. Mm. So what did you see in those socials? Nothing. That's the weird thing. Ah. I didn't see anything. <laughs> I went to the whole oh, damn. I didn't find anything at all. And but then wow. he picked it up that I I'd, I'd logged in and he was mad. He told his friends they thought I was psycho, but we still didn't break up then. I think we mm. only then broke up afterwards because he was leaving the country and I had other plans in my head and he had other plans in his head. And I think mm. I was just one of my friends just said, dude, you are not yourself. Cause I'm this, you know, bubbly, usually bubbly, happy person. I do what I want. I live on my own terms, that sort of thing. Yeah. And it wasn't happening. And so um, my friend just told me that you're different. So yeah. So we ended up breaking up. And um, in the meantime, you know, I'm also still talking to, to K, I'll K, uh, call him K because I don't want to offend the Twanas. Um, yeah. I was talking to K, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, but I just love that name. I absolutely love it. I was talking to K, you know, just, you know, the usual, what's up, what's up, how's everything going, how are you and, you know, X going, that sort of thing. So, yeah. um, forward we broke up um, and then it, was, it wasn't that messy, but it was just like really, like he broke me because I was so... I was such a, you know, a hopeless romantic. I believed in the roses. I believed, but I just didn't really believe in Valentine's. I still don't. But I believed in things like roses and things like, you know, like just the romantic stuff, all the cheesy stuff that was, I believed in getting married, all of that. But anyways, he sort of broke me. And I was like, what is the point of being in love? What is the point of being in a relationship with anybody? So after that, I really, I was with some people. But um, Mm -hmm. it was really like the moment a guy said, um, I want to take this to the next level, you know, let's be committed. I'll just be like, nah, fam, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm very happy not having a, um, you know, like not having a title to this because having a title would just stress me. I would like have a low key panic attack. That's how messed up I was in the head. Um, And I always used to. I always used to use my ex. Even to this day, I still have like, you know, that trauma. I'm trying to do better. 
But um, yeah, so um, yeah, so that's what happened. And um, I broke a few hearts, well, a lot along the way. And, you know, I'd have guys in the series as, you know, like I really would see us getting married and I'm like, oh my God, leave me alone. I'd run for the hills. I'd run for the yeah. hills. So, so it happened. I went back to Zim for about a year and then I moved to Australia. So when I moved to Australia, again, I'm still in contact with, um, with X, X and I are now like just talking, we're just friends and, you know, like we actually are friends even to this day. And then um, hmm. Key and I are, you know, like, like we're talking still. Um, so I'm here. I'm in Aussie. Everything's going cool. Mm -hmm. So I meet Y. <laughs> y mm -hmm. is a way African man. <laughs> so, so, so you said Y is a what man? West African. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Should I say that? Anyway, you can always... Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just saying it like it is, right? So I mean, why? Mm. Why is like, mm. you know, this guy, he's he's really, he's pretty cool. He's he's fun. Um, he's he, he's all right. He's not usually, he's not my type. But he told me that he loved me. He was in love with me two weeks into meeting him. And I was like, nah, fam, I don't take this mm -mm. kind of nonsense. But he was always that guy, you know, like who was always there. You know, when everyone, when you need to get your itch scratched, like he would always be there, you know, that sort of thing. No, what, and what, what sort of, what sort of itch are we talking about here? <laughs> Come on. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, like when you want to, you know, like get laid, you want to have sex with somebody. Like you're just like, yo. You know? <laughs> and then he was always available because he told me that okay. he loved me. He was in love with me. And I think to a point I sort of um, took advantage of that, you know, but he wasn't stupid. He's not okay. stupid. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so why and I, you know, we're, we're, we're talking, we're having fun, but it's just on and off. I'm also like meeting other people here and, you know, doing other things with other people, messing around doing whatever, still refusing to be in a committed relationship because why I don't want to get hurt. Why? Because mm. love is for suckers, you know. So that's what I thought. That's not what I'm saying. Um, were you were you were you thinking that because of the experience you'd had with X? Yes. So okay. X, like the experience with X, like really traumatized me because I'm coming yeah, from someone yeah. who absolutely believes in love. To oh my god! So this is what happens mm. when you give your heart to somebody, when you give yeah. your all to someone. This is what happens. So. Yeah, so why and I, you know, would have really, really explosive fights. And then in this mm -hmm. one fight, he told me that, you know what, you're not wifey material. You know, you're, you're all focused with your work, you're focused with your friends, but you're not focused on getting married, you're not wifey material. That cut me, you know. Wow. Um, that was that moment, like he told me, like so much that my friends call him wifey material, like because he said I am not wifey <laughs> material. I was like, ah, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so he told me that, and then we weren't talking for a bit. So anyway, fast forward to two thousand and seventeen. Yeah, two thousand and seventeen, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, one of my favorite composers. He's a composer of. Um, movie scores he was on a world tour mm. so he was he came over to my city and um, yeah. he performed i shared it of course on the social media and so this was around april then he went to to keys um city um yeah. i think two months afterwards so went to the same um so he went to that concert and then he shared on his socials and then we just started talking. Oh my God, he's amazing. He's the best, blah, 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 Batman, this, you know. And, yeah. um, and then we just started talking more than normal. And for once in our lives, we were both single. Ah. So both he and I were single, but he's all the way in Canada. I'm all the way in Australia. Yeah. Our time difference is like 14, 15 hours. Um, Jeez. we start talking a lot more in November. So this is through, you know, memes on Instagram. Um, yeah. and we're just talking. So at first I'm just like, ah, you know, this is just one of my homeboys, you know, like, ah, and bearing mm -hmm. in mind why and I are not talking 
because we've had an explosive fight, like a mm. really bad fight. So we're not talking. Um, but instead, you know what? I'm talking to, um, like, I've got, like, Key's got all my attention. So we're talking. Mm. Everything's fine. And then, so this is November 2017. By December 2017, right, he's telling me, oh, you know, you're really gorgeous. You're beautiful. You know, telling me all those things. But it, with me, I don't yeah. really, I, I, like, I know a lot of men will tell you things that they think you want to hear. And with me, I'm uh, like, okay, do you really mean that, dude? And besides, anyway, you're all the way there. It's not like you're going to get in my pants by saying that. You don't have to like, it's like, no, seriously, you are quite gorgeous because I just cut my hair or something and I have I had this Afro look. So this dude yeah. now, I post a photo on my Instagram and then he says, oh, can you please send me that photo? <laughs> I was like, oh, Great. Okay, that's kind of cringe. But anyway, I kind of appreciated it. He's like, oh, no, I'll do a bit of editing for you, blah, blah, blah. I was like, ah, okay, you could have just taken a screenshot, but I guess you wanted the better yeah. quality. I don't know. Yeah. I thought that was funny. Um, and then by then I still thought, okay, fine. He's not telling me I'm beautiful. Uh, maybe that's what he tells his friends. So we're going on, we're talking, we're sharing all these beautiful messages. And he's asking me about what I think about things like poetry. I'm like, oh, I'm not really on the artistic side of things in that sort of regard. But, you know, I kind of have an appreciation for it. So, yeah. um, you know, we're talking. So we're bonding on those sort of things. We're bonding on a lot of Afro. So it's around that time where, you know, it was really important for women to embrace their Africanness or there was more talk yeah. about embracing that Africanness. So we were, we were really, you know, talking, bonding on that, on that topic. Mm -hmm. um, he goes home, he's in Zim on the holidays. So he was in Zim. I was here cause I had family over. Um, and he's telling me that, Oh, I've told my family, I've shown my family a photo and I told them I like you. I'm like, dude, uh -uh. What the fuck? you know, like, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, we're friends, right? It's like, yeah, but I told you, I, I, I think you're beautiful. I was like, okay, that's fine. But why are you telling your family? So, so this is the boundaries thing that I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I yeah, a family yeah. where we have boundaries. Like I come from a very liberal family, um, mm -hmm. yeah, a bit of conservative conservative stuff from my mom here and there but it's generally very liberal and we have boundaries like we don't always talk about everything but we're there for each other yeah. but he comes from that family where they are extremely open like open, yeah is, yeah whatever works for different people that's great i respect it i'm not in there so i'm not going to judge but anyway so i wasn't very happy with that so here's a question for you mm -hmm. um uh, <laughs> Were you entirely surprised by him saying that sort of thing? Saying what? That he finds me beautiful? And not that he likes you. Yeah. Did you get any hint during your conversations that, okay, you know, this st stuff is starting to change between us. This guy maybe might like me. Uh, okay. I, I just think that maybe, but I didn't think it was going to be that fast. I generally don't do things really fast. I like to take my time if I'm going to sort of try to be in something. Um, so, so how much time were you actually giving him here? So here, I mean, we started like proper talking on a daily basis. Like he would know when I'm waking up because of the time difference. Mm -hmm. um, I would know when he's waking up, that sort of thing. So we would talk, like we sch schedule our conversations and I just thought, oh, you know, it's just exciting. We're just going, uh, we're just going with the flow. That's my favorite thing to say. Uh, we're just mm -hmm. going with the flow. We just see whatever happens. I really didn't think it was going to lead anywhere. I just thought that, ah, uh, you know what? Um, it's just going to be one of those, uh, we're just going to talk and then it'll fizzle, you know? That sort of thing. But no, he's telling his family and they're a very close-knit family. He's telling his family... Yeah. That, um, you know, this is a girl that I really like. And I'm telling, I'm like, if I have a, if I have a man and I'm really into him, the only time I'll tell my family or my, my parents really is when, you know, he decides to put a ring on it. Otherwise my family yeah, would yeah. never know. That's how I am. That's right. How, gotcha. How it's always been. So for me, gotcha. I didn't really like that Tinto. I really didn't like mm -hmm. it. Um, and I did say that, oh, it's a bit odd. You know, you need to wait on these things or at least tell me. 
um, because I just find it a bit too much um, because yeah. we haven't even really had like a proper conversation about feelings or anything. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So anyways, so he, he was like, okay, that's fine. I just got so excited. He gets really excited by the way. And I, you know, which is fine. I thought that was cool. He's very childlike. I'm very childlike <laughs> myself. I'm really a big kid yeah. um, and childlike. Um, so I thought that was kind of cute in a way. Um, so December, he goes back to Canada, January, things are on fire, guys. Like it's it's just it's just heat, man. Like heat <laughs> what sort of things <laughs> well, what sort of things are we talking about that are on fire? Because one moment, right, you're like, nah, dude, I'm not feeling you saying this, and then suddenly things are on fire. So what changed and what is on fire? So one thing, right, about me is that uh uh-huh. I make conscious decisions. If I am going to try something, like when it comes to anything in life, really, I make that decision to say, I'm going to do it because I want to do it, not because somebody is pressuring Mm. me to do it. And because Mm. I had, you know, I'd been seeing a lot of my friends getting married. I'd been a bridesmaid to like, I think four weddings, you know, every year since 2000 and freaking 16 or whatever. So I think I was like, maybe I should settle down, you know? Um, Right. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to give this guy a chance. Maybe God is just trying to say, baby girl, just chill out. You know, he's far, but you make it work. Um, So I'm going to ask you a question right now. Yeah. This is a guy you you, you last saw in high school. Yep. Right. And And you've had all these conversations over the phone. Yes. What is it that you suddenly liked about him now that you're apart that you that you didn't like about him when you were in high school and that was the perfect time for you to be to be together? What had changed? What did you like about him? I think it's because we'd all grown up. We were single at that time. Um, we didn't have anyone, and he looked good. <laughs> well, at least on the photos, <laughs> he looked great. <laughs> he seemed, and that's another thing. He seemed to be living this awesome life. But here's the mean. question: Didn't he look good in high school? Uh look, even I looked horrible in high school. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like I okay, looked fine. hideous in high school. Like I don't even like okay. my high school photos. Um, but you mm-hmm. know, there's something about you know when you start working, you do your own thing. There's that kind of glow up, glow up. Yeah. Um. So he definitely had that glow up, and he was all about you know working out, eating right. And any here I am, I just eat what I want. I hardly work mm-hmm. out. I just do you know whatever I want to do that sort of thing. So. I think it sort of started on he he so December January we're talking about um poetry I'm writing some some of these you know some of these lines I send them to him is like oh my god that's great you should do more mm-hmm. of it and I'm just like oh my god I need to do more of it I'm feeling so stressed out because you know when he wakes up am I going to have more poetry um mm-hmm. and then he's talking about eating right eating healthy he's sending me all these diet things I'm like yeah I should I should start eating right right I should eat I should do better I should work out I should run more I should you know do all of these things so it's like he was shoving them down my throat and because I wanted to please him, and a part of me knew I sort of had to do better, especially mm-hmm. like when it came to eating right and reading a bit more. Because I honestly I don't really like reading unless it's Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. wow! And then this guy was busy loading you with poems left, right, and center. I know, right? I'm thinking, oh, no, we should God. be talking about Hagrid or something. Wow. Um, yeah. So I think he, he thought I was a bit childish. I, I could tell. He thought I was a bit on the childish side. And he was trying to sort of change me into this woman who he thought um, I, sh- I ought to be. And I wasn't, mm. you know, I wasn't quite being that woman. I wasn't checking in enough. I was So I started like going to the gym and I wasn't going enough days. I wasn't doing enough. I wasn't spending enough time. So I'm always trying to, you know, do better. And it's always like, you're your own competition. But I was thinking, I'm just doing this because of you, dude. At this moment, I really this don't is, want to do this. You know, this is all very interesting. I, I can see how all your lessons are starting to tie up in this. So the very first one is don't let past hurts and trauma dictate how you get on with life. And I can yeah. see where all the trauma originated from. It was X. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah. And then I can see the whole part about don't uh, do long distance relationships without a plan because mm-hmm. you've just decided to go with the flow with uh, with 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 Kiale Boja, right? Yes. And then your third lesson is if you want to be a better person, do it at your own pace. Yeah. And it feels like this guy is starting to dictate your pace of, of changing, right? Yes, essentially. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. So now, remember, I thought that, oh my God, this guy looks so good. He's so whatever. Mm. Then, because I think we just made our relationship official, you know, official in February, in the February of 2018. And yeah. um, so because we made our relationship official in 2018, um, then he started telling me a lot of things. Like I said, he's very open and I'm generally not very, very open. I need to take my time to, you know, to open up about, especially family stuff. He was telling me about a whole lot of stuff that mm-hmm. even I couldn't handle. You know what I mean? Like, I can't say it obviously, but it was deep shit. Like, I was yeah. like, what am I to do with this information? So all of a sudden, he's no longer this person that I I perceived him to be. And mm-hmm. he was this guy who had all this stuff to deal with in his life. And here I am, you know, I don't know how to deal with it. I felt like it was too much too soon. And then, you know, I told him I it was a lot. It was I was overwhelmed. Uh, with the information, but I would try to, you know, to, to, to be supportive, as supportive as I could be. Then the issue started coming up. So what is the plan? What's going to happen? We can't be in a long distance relationship. If we don't have a plan, we need to decide. Yeah. I was willing to move to freaking Canada. Okay. And I was going to do it. I was going to do it. Cause I could, you know, I could. But why were you going to do it though? Were you were you that deep in love? I was now in love, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I know, I know. Like it's it's uh, yeah. Yeah. Life is weird. Mm. It's only going to get worse. So um so yeah, so we're everything's going on. We start having major fights about it. He's not ready because he's got those issues going on. So he, I'm like, I'm happy to come along. I can do it because of my job. I can be there, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. And he's just like a bit not sure. He wants to come here at some point, but I'm like, it's much harder for me. I, it's better for me to come over there on my own visa than it is for him to come here on like a spouse visa or something like that or whatever de facto mm-hmm. um, thing. Mm-hmm. Anyways, it ended up being like a big hoo-ha. Then the fight started in April. Like the fights got really, really bad. And I'm one of those people. I hate it when people take screenshots of conversations on WhatsApp. I, yeah. I don't yeah. like it. Yeah, yeah, true. For that very reason. Uh, I'm, I'm exactly the same with yeah. that. Yeah. So he used to take, we used to have fights. Man used to write me Bibles and Bibles and Bibles and bi- Bibles and paragraphs and paragraphs. Um, lecturing me, you know, when you have fights and stuff like that. I, I'm not a saint in this. I was never a saint in this whole thing. I contributed to it. But he would write a lot of shit and then he would screenshot and send my responses to his people. So he'd send to his family group chat. They would comment. They would tell no him, way. you do this. Why should she do that? She's being a bitch about this. Not that her his family said that, no, but like maybe his friends would say that sort of stuff. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. He would tell me that I told my friends. I send screenshots to my, you remember that other friend I told her and they think that I should leave you. So ah, fast forward in June, July, somebody very close to him passed away and I, things were very rocky. I think another thing then was that I'm not a lovey dovey person. So sometimes I'd fall asleep in the middle of texting or on a phone call, I'll fall asleep. He's one of those he loves to <laughs> I'm, and if somebody does that to wow. me, I would understand because <laughs> you get tired, isn't it? Like I would understand. Yeah. But with him and I was getting first and with him, it's okay. Texting long, you know that long distance, the calling, the texting. He was fine with that. You know? Uh, he's a words of affirmation kind of guy. I'm more that physical touch, acts of service. I want to do stuff for you, you know. That shit didn't work for him. He didn't want that. He was fine with, you know, sort of like prolonging the distance. 
I wasn't. Wow. So, so that stuff really started coming out and we started fighting a lot. Then his family mm-hmm. member passed away and I sort of had to drop that. And then I had to be there for him. He said I wasn't there for him enough. Um, I like to give people boundaries because with grief, you don't really know how a person grieves. Um, perhaps yeah, yeah. there for him a bit more, it didn't happen. So end of July, August, he, we, and we decided to, let's just call it quits like Jaramba, like this is not going to work. Um, and then we broke it off. And, um, so who, uh- it's, it's funny that you say it, it's funny to say that we broke it off but you know normally in a breakup somebody has got more of the weight and the desire to let go than the other so I was did. it you who wanted or oh, you did okay i was done like it was it was mm. not making sense anymore i was like what is the point like there's no plan right there's no plan we're just fighting he talks to me like a kid at least that's how i took it um okay let me just talk to you about that plan element Mm-hmm. Who was meant to draw up the plan? We were meant to discuss it and, you know, come up with the decision. Because, see, the okay. Like, we're, so, we're uh, okay, so yeah, you are grown folk, right? Mm. And within this plan, it, it already feels to me like in this relationship, there's somebody who is leading and the other one who's kind of following, okay? So, the leader of whoever was the leader in your situation should have made this plan more concrete, you know, tabled it, right? This is what I want us to do, A, B, C, D. I know you said that you were willing to move to Canada to be with him. Mm-hmm. This was your initiative. But yeah. in this plan that you guys are pushing so hard for, yeah. could you have done more to solidify it? No. I couldn't because I kept pushing. So I ended up feeling like a nag. Every single time we said, okay, "Okay, so then let's do this. You then come and visit. Something would always mysteriously come up. Oh, I can't. I can't find my passport. Oh, I can't. So I was like, "Mm, what's going on Mm. in Canada? Have you not told me the whole story? Because I was. It's it's a red flag, isn't it? Exactly. There were so many Mm. nyayas like, oh, this then or that then or this then. Then you'll tell me stories. I don't like people who tell me stories. I just wanted to go to ga ga ga. Like, sorry for putting. So here's a there. question for you: mm. Did you ever go to Canada for holiday just to be with your boo? No, I didn't. I wanted to organize that. He wouldn't let me. Not that he wouldn't let me, but the thing is, I couldn't get annual leave. Like, I would have gone during the summer, but we were having so mm. many issues. I was willing yeah. to go. Hell, I was willing to go for two weeks. You know, like wow. whole time. That's what I was willing to do, but it okay. was always such an uphill battle. So I just said, mm. you know, nah, I can't. I'm a physical touch person. I, you yeah, know, yeah. About quality time. And and, and I guess this is what is really really tying into your your fifth lesson where you said you need to know your dominant love language. Yes. And the dominant love language of your partner. So you've just told me that touch and physical touch and you know being embraced and held close is. You know, part of your dominant love language. What was his dominant love language? He was more words of affirmation. Um, okay, and and and, and, and how I'm many not of those like did you that. Like, if I tell you I love you, right today, mm-hmm. uh, I'll tell you next year because you know I love you, right? Well, here's why, the thing. Why, why do you have so, to keep telling you, it it steals away from you know from the beauty of that. It's a very important word. Well, I could I, I could turn this back on you and say, well, what would what would be the significance of him having you close and holding you tight anyway? Because it takes away from the significance of intimacy. But it's it's there, like it's happening. <laughs> I I I think that's the thing with me. I could never really, you know, I I can't really answer because you know what? That's it. We're different people. I guess okay. he feels the so, same way about that, you know. So, 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 what if part of his behavior was fueled by the fact that you were not giving him these words of affirmation? I, I think it was because we did have a conversation about it. It was, it was. He, he told me that. So perhaps your plan could have been solidified if you had just said "I love you" a few more times. Then it would have been more comfortable and happy for you to come to Canada, knowing that you genuinely do love him. I think it's that, but I think it's also the the millions of stories that he would tell me when we tried to, you know, to 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 make a plan for us to be united, reunited. 
maybe it's because he didn't feel loved enough. Oh, perhaps. I, I, I mean, I'm just posing questions. I'm not saying this is what the reality <laughs> was. But just, 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 just honing in on your very important lesson yeah. about needing to understand somebody's dominant love language. You knew what this guy's dominant love language is, but you chose not to give him what he needed. I and think... I guess in turn, that, that, that meant that he couldn't give you what you needed, yes. which is, you know, the love, the proximity, you know, the touch. Yeah. I actually think that that's it. I think that's, I think I was selfish as well. It was just my mm. needs. And I was just trying to focus on just being in the same place together. So, you know, I could have my needs met and I, I probably failed to, to cater to his, I actually did fail to cater to his, um, now that you say it. Now that he did mention things like that, that I don't appreciate, I didn't appreciate you not, you know, catering to that side of, you know, to what I needed, what I wanted. You'd fall asleep without saying good night. You wouldn't say good morning sometimes, or, you know, yeah. you wouldn't tell me how your day's been um, or, you know, that sort of thing. I just get it straight into, you know, business. Let's talk about this. Oh yeah. So da, da, da. You know, yeah. that's the kind of person I am. I'm just like, I've got a general sense of urgency. And um, I think maybe I was just more focused on me and not on him as well. Which is... So I know you still have quite a bit to tell about this story, but this is really just highlighting your very first lesson, which was don't let past hurt, yep. uh, drama and trauma, you know, get in the way of you. You need to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. So is is this... As in, did this come to life only after you broke up with him? Because if it if it's something you knew before, the past trauma feels like it was playing a big part. Because remember, you believed in love so much until yes. X really screwed you over, and then you're like, uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not going there. And then yeah. here you meet Kiale Boha, who needs those very same elements that you said you would never get back to. Mm -hmm. So was the trauma already at at play here? So the trauma was already there. And with Kelly Buha, right, I made that decision to say, I am going to open my heart to this man. I am going yeah. to, I'm not going to let this trauma, I'm not going to let the hurt. I'm just going to be myself, be my crazy, quirky, eccentric, you know, self. So, so you um, made the conscious decision to, to, to let the past stay in the past, not influence what you have today. Yes, but I hadn't dealt mm. with it. I didn't deal I with see. it. I just sort of put it in a, you know, that little, you know, box at the back room or in storage. That's what I did. Mm. That's what in I In hindsight. Did. Yeah. In hindsight. But what does dealing with it mean for you now? What could you have done to confidently say I've dealt with it? I have to address it. I have to, to understand and to appreciate and to acknowledge that there are issues with me as a result of this this is the reason why i behave in this way why don't i want to be in a committed relationship it's because this happened to me and it scares me being in a committed relationship scares the shit out of me right so you're speaking you're, you're speaking in present tense yes <laughs> i'm still i'm still trying to heal I am trying to heal from, from this. And like I said, I'm still friends with X and I decided X played his part. Yes, but I don't hate him because now the ball's in my court. It's like happiness. Yes. Somebody will come. They'll call you whatever they call you. They'll do whatever they do to you. In that instance, you're going to be angry at them. You're going to be sad. You're going to be unhappy. But ultimately it's my job. It's my duty to ensure that I'm happy. So I can't keep blaming other people. I have to deal with it. Is the ball really in your court, Isis? <laughs> it is. And I'm asking you this question because you've kept a door open with the very same person who broke your heart to smithereens. Like... So is the, so, so is the ball really in your court? B -b -b because what, you know, all X needs to do is just turn back and say, hey, Isis, I'm really, really sorry for the way that I treated you. I did so because of A, B, C, D, E. Mm -hmm. And if he's a charmer, he will give you reasons that you will look back and say, do you know what? I actually believe him. And that trauma could easily vanish because he said the right things. No. See, I don't ever no. want to be with him. Like I look at him and I'm like, nah, you know, every time I, I, I look at him or, you know, I'm just like, oh, X, you know, whatever. I pops up on my socials. 
I'm like, man, this dude, like he's good people. Obviously now we're older, you know, like people get married, people get in relationships, whatever. It's a bit awkward and out of respect, I wouldn't want to, you know, have any, like have much talk with him because just out of respect for his partner, that sort of thing. But if we were younger, we'll probably just get back to being friends. But now we're older. It's not going to happen. But I always just think, man, I shouldn't have. Okay. You know? Help, yeah. me, help me understand something. Yes. What, what are you benefiting from the person who caused you a lot of pain? He's actually really good to talk to when I, I, I have like real life stuff to talk to about. Like, um, he's, he's a good person. Like we, we have good chats when we do, we haven't really spoken, um, in a very long time though, but when we, and it's not like we talk all the time, Hey dude was no, no, no. It's like random, maybe once every six months or something. And it's always like mm-hmm. a pleasant surprise. Um, Hey, how are you doing? So, you know, this is what's happening. Oh my gosh. You know, we've got this, we've got that going on. And you know, that, that's just it. Like it's, I feel like I benefit a lot. Um, in terms of it could be business sort of stuff. Um, it could be, you know, like just something on, oh yeah, so dude, oh my gosh, I met this guy and then this is what happened. It's like, no, you should try to do better or whatever. I even told him about K, about Kelly Buam. Um, and you know, like he was just like, Oh, okay, that's cool. That's cool, <laughs> you know. Um interesting. Yeah. Like, it's really like a chill relationship. Like, it's a chill friendship. But you're still afraid to commit. I'm getting there. Like, now, now it's just, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing in Australia. There's nothing that has tickled my fancy. At least in this in this area that I'm at. Nothing, you know, that you can, as in no serious guys or anything. I've kept a very low profile. There aren't any serious people in this place. I I think I'm there now. I think I'm getting there at least. Um, But it's like, it's really kind of dry. And like, I don't want to, you know, like I've done the whole fucking around thing. I've done it. I've had fun. Uh, Sometimes I just felt it was just too much. I'm done with that, you know? And I'm just like, oh, okay. There's nothing So, so good. So, so just to bring you back in, um, mm-hmm. you, you and you know Kiali Boha decided to break up. We broke well, up. Well, well, you decide. Yeah, yeah, you broke up. Yes, and oh, then what, what was his reaction to your breakup? Um, he was like, "Yeah, let's do it. I'm done with this." Like he kind of hated me as well. So at this point, he loved me more than I was into him. I think. Um, you understand <laughs> why I say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. So anyway, long story, uh, fast forward. So he moved back to Zim, like as in packed his bags and moved back to Zim, like around September-ish, October 2018. Yeah. And yeah. then um, I happened to go home that December 2018. And then I just happened to tell him, we weren't talking, like no talking. Like it was like, you know what, do you, I'm a do me, that sort of thing. Um, so what do you mean you say, what do you mean when you say you happened to tell him? You made you made a conscious effort to tell him. Yeah, I just I, I sent him a message. Um, I sent him a Why message. Why were you telling your your ex that you were around? I think we just had to talk. Like I felt like we needed a face to face to just deal with a lot of shit that had happened. Okay. So, sorry, I'm gonna rewind a little bit. So when mm-hmm. um I broke it off with um with K Key Kelly Buha. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to a church conference and then they were talking about forgiveness, blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. <laughs> I decided to forgive. Why? For his, you know, for his, for the outburst, for the fight that we had. So all this time I was with Key. Um, I wasn't talking to Y, but after the church conference, I started talking to X. I told him I forgive him and things like that. Mm-hmm. And then, sorry, to Y, and I told him I forgive him. And I feel like, you know, we should just let bygones be bygones. We don't have to be friends, but I just want us to be cool. It's like, nah, 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 it's all good. We should all just, you know, we should talk. I think it's very important, you know, just to have a discussion, whatever. So we did that. Uh, and it was really pleasant. And we're just talking about our goals in life and all of that very mature conversation we had. 
we were not back together or whatever it is. We weren't even messing around. So mm-hmm. in November, um, Key, not Key, sorry, Y says that, oh, I'm, I'm leaving the state. I'm going over to another state. So I just want to come and see you. I really, really need to see you. So I'm just thinking, dude, what's going on? So bearing in mind, we've been having like really, really good conversations. You know, talking about, you know, settling down, having babies. But, you know, just I'm talking about my goals in life. He's talking about his. And I think he had this like, oh, my gosh, this girl, she's matured over this time. So dude um, comes over to my house um, and it's just a random Monday evening. He really insisted. Like Mondays for me are a no-no. Like I'm just trying to deal with the mm-hmm. fact that it's a Monday. I've just had a whirlwind mm-hmm. day probably at work. He rocks up. I'm just making coffee and everything. I turn around. Dude's on one knee. I'm like, what the actual? Uh, what? What, what the actual F is going on here? Wh- wh- wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. So this is why this is why the West African guy yes. who who said he loved you within two weeks. But you just weren't ready for that because your heart had been broken by X and you weren't in that space. I but now be. you guys are talking again. He's seen this newfound um, maturity in you and he thinks it's the perfect time to get one on, I mean, get on one knee. Yes. <laughs> wow. Dude, I was pissed off. I was mad. Why were you pissed off? No, I'm like, why are you taking away my moments? Like... You're not going to marry me. Like, I'm not going to marry somebody who tells me that a woman's role is to bear babies and a man's role is to provide. And, you know, I mean, I I respect women who decide they want to stay at home or believe that. But it's not for me. And we had that conversation. I was like, dude, and he likes to use money. I don't care about money. See, things like money don't really drive me. Of course, I like nice things, but. It's not a driver. And I find a lot of men who sort of ask me, I'll try to use the money thing. So he would try to get me another car. He would try to do stuff. The ring, the ring. Oh, child. I was mm. like, I was just like, I wish he was the one for me because I would have put that ring on. Um, wow. Then I just told him to just get up. I helped him to get back up. And I was like, mate, like, this is not, this is not it. Like, um, I don't want to get married to you. Like you're a great person, but you're not great for me. You'll be somebody else's husband and that'll be freaking amazing. And it wasn't even the, the, the person in me who doesn't want to commit. No, it's just the fact that we just don't get along. Like we just don't get on like that. And, um, I was shocked and it was just awkward. We ended up not even having our tea and stuff. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So, jeez, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so this oh, is November, December. <laughs> December I got it <laughs> mm-hmm. I really don't know what to say for that guy. Yeah. Did you um? Uh, I'll just go one question. Did you yeah. at least hug when when he decided to leave the house? Yeah, I walked him to his car, obviously, hmm. um, and I just gave him a hug, and I said, you know what, it's like. Honestly, you and I would never make a good couple. We'd both be miserable. We'd both always be fighting. I'm a very stubborn person. And our, the way we were yeah. raised, just very different. I came a family where boys, you know, the boys would be following, you know, even before yeah. my mom even used to have mobs. So I come from that kind of family. And he comes from a family where the girls did everything and he did nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, no, no, that makes sense. Yeah, so for me, it, it was never gonna work. So it wasn't just that; it was things he'd say. He said, "I'm not wifey material." So what? All of a sudden, I'm wifey material? Nah, fam. Yeah. So I, I just said, nah. nah. I thought he was he wasn't gonna take it well because he's got a lot of pride, but he took it mm-hmm. well. He took it like a man, and um, we still talk here and there. Um, not that much. He came back, he moved back, and um, that we haven't hung out or anything. It's just, it's just yeah. pretty awkward. It's, we have our blowouts, we have our fights. Um, yeah. So it, it's just. So, how was, your, so how was your conversation with Kalia Bokhay and Zim then? Zim, I tell him I've landed. The next, the very mm. next day, we catch up. What was supposed to be like a 30, 45 minute coffee catch up ended up being like a six hour discussion. 
Like it was such wow. an interesting discussion. We were just, nothing physical, or anything like that. He was sitting there. We were sitting across from each other. We're talking about. Yeah. I had my text. I was like, "So what did you mean when you were saying this?" Then he's like, "What oh, were you saying? Wow. When you were saying that I didn't appreciate it." So that's when it all came up. That you know the whole love language is thing. You were saying that I would appreciate it if you told me that you love me more. Or if you told me that, um, you know, like other things, like, you know, you're proud of me or whatever. I'm just like, dude, I told you that I'm proud of you once. I, I didn't think I needed to keep saying it. But I know, I know, I know it's it's like a lesson. It's a lesson learned, yeah. and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So did that, um, caught up. <laughs> then we were in a whirlwind summer romance. Oh, guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, like, 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 how does this even happen? <laughs> Lord of mercy. Dude, how, you know how long, how, long, how long were you guys in Zim for? I was in Zim for three weeks, four weeks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, it was freaking amazing. Like he would, he would, because he knows I love wine. I love wine. I love tea, that sort of thing. He would go, he would get, um... He would would have like picnics, you know. That's it. Was, he very romantic. I enjoyed every minute of it. We'd go on drives. We'd talk. We'd do a whole lot of fooling around. It was fun. I enjoy. I can tell you, I was now more in love with him than he was with me. You know, um, wow. and I was just, I was into it. I wanted it. I so wanted it so bad. I wanted him really badly. Um, and I thought, okay, he's definitely the one. You know what I mean? Like, and then, um, yeah, so I came back and then we're like having this discussion and things like that. And then one thing that really put, that really made me really sad is that he said, oh, my family said that, uh, oh, so sorry, let's rewind New Year's Eve. So mm -hmm. New Year's Eve, I'd said, oh no, actually my sister and I threw a party, um, and we had like a whole lot of people. I invited him over. He didn't come cause I guess he was tired, which is fine. New Year's Eve, I was like, we're just going to have something chill at my house. I don't like to drive, so you can come. You can just chill. You can sleep over. Not a, like my mom's going to be there, so you can get to the guest room or something. He refuses. Like, my dad said he doesn't want that. I'm like, dude, you're old. You're in your late 20s. And you're talking about my dad, you know? Um, so yeah, a lot yeah. of things ended up being my dad, my mom, my dad, my mom said this, my dad said this. He had the nerve when I moved, when I come back. To tell me that, oh, my mom said that long distance relationships are not good. Uh, that's how people end up getting HIV and die from AIDS. Because Whoa. they're cheating on each other. Dude, you could have just told me you don't want to be with me. Why are you involving your oh mom? My you know what I mean? Goodness. His siblings now hated me. His friends now hated me. He's telling everybody that, oh, I'm so into him. And, you know, I told him, I was like, dude, I really am so into you. I want to make this work. I really, truly, like I had broken every single whatever barrier. Rule in the book, yeah. It was like, I am coming in full force, but the tables had turned. He was not that yeah. pragmatic because I was quite pragmatic previously. But yeah. he was a pragmatic one. I was more, no, love conquers all. But I can tell you this. One of the lessons is love is not enough. It's not enough. Yeah. And you know this. You know this is a thing that I've um, spoken about on Coffee with Tinto. Mm -hmm. You know that the, the amount of 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 waiting we give to love, yeah, shouldn't really be as big as as we do because love is very very fickle. Yeah, it's fickle. One time you're like, yeah, I'm so into him. The next yeah. time, like, oh no, not really. I don't want. Yeah, so. Yeah, so that that that's one thing. And I didn't really expand too much on the boundaries bit because of time. Yeah. But there yeah. was a lot of stuff he would just give to people. Or he wants to know too much about me that I'm not ready to give out. You know, I wasn't ready. I'm not going to tell anyone about body my body count. None of that's going to happen. You know, things like that. Or... um you know, like just some family stuff. I'm not ready. I'm not comfortable yet. And he would get impatient about that sort of stuff. And um, that would make me uncomfortable. And I'm thinking, okay, he's kind of overstepping. Or he's trying to force me to be somebody that I'm not. 
Um, yeah. But he's human. Um, we're all human. And we had our frustration. So, so, so after this summer love, you, you went back to Australia and what, mm-hmm. that was it? Ah, then that he then he broke my heart, broke it to pieces. I was on the bus crying. Mm-hmm. This one time I was wow. on the bus coming from work. He told me that that's when he told me about the HIV thing. He's like, my mom said that <laughs> long distance relationships <laughs> are not very good because people uh, cheat on each other. That is nuts. Yeah. A lot of things it was just my mom, this, my dad this. I, I I can see where the words of affirmation were really uh, his dominant love language because it's something that he he has relied on because yes. he's clearly very very close to his parents and family and they talk very, very openly about stuff so they reaffirm each other that way with very. words and, very. and you were just not that person no and and, uh, and uh, and I guess it's a good thing because you yep. couldn't be that person and to be honest uh, he sounds a bit needy given the kind of relationship that he has. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. You, you, like, you, you would have never been able to satisfy his needs as his wife because he will always compare you to his mom. Yes. Uh, you said it, Tinto. Let the record have it that you said it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get in trouble for this. Time. <laughs> so, yeah. so are, you guys still, are, are you guys still in touch then? We are sort of in touch, but then I yeah. think he uses me sometimes. Um, yeah, yeah. Because he's, he's got this LinkedIn presence or whatever, and he mm-hmm. he's always asking me for questions, and I'm like, nah, fam. The other time I was like, uh-uh, I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna go try to start a conversation on LinkedIn or whatever. Yeah, and, uh, I yeah. just ignore. I, I I ignore. So like, he doesn't say hello. I'm all about like, I like polite people. And yeah, courtesy, say hello, yeah. how are you? How's everything going? And then get mm-hmm. to your question. You just be like, So, what do you think? Can you follow my link? Like my story. So, at first, I was so into him, I would go and I would respond yeah. and I would start conversations, comment on stuff. And I was like, Nah, what am I doing? What the hell am I doing? It, it's, it's, it's interesting how tables turn and things change, huh? Yeah, in a short space of time. So, um, last question before I close out. Yeah. How are you with commitment now? On a real. On a real, I am there. However, however, mm. um, every time I've sort of tried to be in something, it always turns out that the men are in some kind of rela- committed relationship with somebody else. And, okay. you know, so I think I'm so I think that's the only thing. I, I haven't had like a true test to, you know, truly test, you know, like by having somebody who's actually honest and um but i think i'm i'm there you know i've talked to people um i've sought some kind of help um on that i've done a bit more reading again in my own time understand myself better and actually identifying the issues that i have and trying to address them um or try to find come up with some kind of strategies to you know to heal, so to speak, to heal those damages. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it hasn't been like an easy road. Sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, is it worth it? Is it worth it? But I'm also like, you know what? I actually want to have babies. Who doesn't want to have babies? I want to have babies. Yeah. Uh, I've yeah. got all these nieces and nephews, but I'm like, you know, I love to be an aunt, like a mommy to somebody's mommy or whatever. But I don't know, dude. Mm. Like, um, I think I've certainly, I'm certainly miles, miles, ahead from where I was, say, like back in 2018, 2017. Yeah. 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 I, I guess they call that growth. Yeah. A lot of growth. Yeah. Yeah. And um well, well thanks man. Just to uh, just 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 to do a recap, the uh, yeah. the five lessons that you mentioned. First one was don't let past hurts. Drama and trauma uh, dictate how you get on with your life. You have to yeah. work on yourself. And I think you've done a really good job of that right now. Mm-hmm. Especially just comparing your views from 2018 to date. So, you know, kudos to you. Well done for at least getting yourself to this spot. Thanks. And then uh, the second one, don't do long distance relationships without a plan. Yeah, yeah I think that became very <laughs> clear very quickly <laughs> in your situation with uh, with Kiale Boja. And yeah. then if you want to be a better person, do it at your own pace and in your own time. It, mm-hmm. that, that couldn't be said any any better. Yeah, because healing really needs to come from within, and you can't rush that process. If no. you do, then you will always go back to that past hurt and trauma, which lesson one is telling you to avoid. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then lesson number four: maintain boundaries uh, in any relationship, romantic, family, friendships. And I, I know you said you didn't really get to touch on it, but I think it became quite clear, especially when the screenshots were being shared with family and friends. You know about yeah. private conversations between between you two. Look, that that is a boundary that should never be crossed. Yes, and perhaps I'll I just agree. add one. I don't think you know. I got a personal view. People shouldn't get into people's social media. Or any phone or <laughs> and stuff. So <laughs> there's totally a boundary agree. that kind of goes in there too. And besides, you went in and you found nothing. I found nothing. You know? and so, <laughs> I don't do it anymore. Like, I don't even yeah. want anyone going through my phone. And I don't. And I always yeah. believe that if somebody's cheating on you, it's going to come out. At some point, it, it will come out. Exactly. No, yeah. It will. Mm-hmm. It will. And then yeah. the last but not least, uh, you need to know your dominant love language um, and you also need to know your partner's dominant love language uh, and also take it a step further and find out whether you are catering to that person's needs or if they're catering to yours. Mm-hmm. That's Thank it. you so much for all these great lessons. And, you know, I really appreciate you taking time, especially with the fact that it was so spontaneous. You look, yeah. you rose to the occasion and you did very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tinto. It was really good, for, actually. <laughs> thank you. And for those who are listening to this um, episode of the Feeling Station podcast, thank you for your time. And I look forward to catching you next week. Peace. Tell me what you feeling Now that it's over and Let me talk about my feelings Let me talk about my feelings Yeah motor no to kujitiru amai Kujitiru amai Love is a fire Kujitiru amai